My name is Kevin Teasley, and welcome to this episode of our Neve 8424 tutorial series. We're here at United Recording Studios on the Sunset and Gower lot in Hollywood, California, in my personal production room, Studio K. As always, behind me is my Neve 8424, and in my side rack, my Neve 8816. Um, it's so much a part of my sound and all the projects that we work on, and we're so fortunate to be able to work on these uh, pieces of gear on all of our projects. Um, we're going to talk about today having the good fortune to work with uh, Coyle Ray uh, on Republic Records uh, on one of her hit songs, uh, No More Parties, uh, featuring Lil Durk. Um, she did a performance of a pre-recorded video package for Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, and um, it was on broadcast TV. So we were able to mix the live band elements with the record stem elements along with the production elements that was actually from the video shoot on set. So we were given all of these assets to mix together to be able to deliver back to the network um, a final mix for the video package. So please click the link below to watch the final broadcast and let's turn around and um, see how we did it. Thank you for staying tuned um, for this episode in our Neve 8424 tutorial where I'm gonna talk about um, using the Neve 8424 to prepare a uh, national network broadcast mix for a performance by Corey LeRae on the Jimmy Fallon Show. Um, we hope that you check the links that were given um, to see the final broadcast that aired on the show, so that way you can hear what the final product sounded like. So let's go through the session and um, let's talk about how I did it. Um, if we look at my Pro Tools screen, it's not a huge session, but I have my direct outs uh, going back into my uh, Pro Tools DAW to be printed, as well as the production tracks. Um, what we did for this show and this performance is that it was a video package to be sent into the network to be uh, played as a, a special performance video package. So we performed it in a warehouse here in Los Angeles, California and treated it as a video shoot, almost like a film shoot. So what we did is I worked with a, um, another great uh, producer and music director, Steve Evans, that goes by Steve-O, the producer. And we played the two track of the approved uh, live performance um, take and played it in the venue because we wanted to make sure that it sounded um, live like it was and in that space even when you put plugins or hardware uh, reverbs that have room simulations on them they just don't sound like uh, a real space because as well they don't um, react unless you're sending it audio um, so we played the two track um, through speakers in the venue and we had a Pro Tools record rig there on set and we recorded the live performance um, back from the speakers we also had Koi uh, perform the track, her vocal, live. Um, so that was fed back through the speakers as well. So we got a nice uh, room ambience of the actual space that we tracked. We also did some Foley recording um, with the um, dancers on set to get some haze and some yeahs and some claps. So we retract that. As well, what I like to do is I like to just record the room tone for like 15 minutes of dead silence in the room. Um, so you're hearing air conditioners, fans, creaks and cracks, little things that happen in the room, especially the natural frequency and tone of the room. Again, because your reverb plugins and hardware only react to when you're sending it um, signal. So we track that as well. We use the live mic. We recorded her live mic direct and dry so that I could bring it back into the studio and mix it. Um, so the, the creative uh, directors and the actual video directors sent me the final cut of the video. And then I play the video back here in the studio through Video Slave 4 and mix the picture, which is always great when you're able to mix the picture because you can get some sort of uh, sense of um, relativity of how things should sound and where they are in the room and, you know, distance forward and back and middle. So that was great. Um, so if we look at the Pro Tools session, again, it's not a lot of tracks. And I have her lead vocal that was tracked. Um, and then some plug-in uh, effects, the BGVs, 
two tracks, live drums, uh, an SPD, um, electronic uh, drum kit, um, percussion sounds, sound effects, Foley and room tone, ambience mics, basses, guitars, keys and synths, and then orchestra. And then you see that I still have my uh, tracks, the direct out tracks that I can print in. This is very important because as we talk about in the video, once you print back in with all the color and the sound from the, the Neve console and all your hardware gear, you know, you're always having to change over your console and repatching can be a bear sometimes. So once I get a, a sound that I like, I like to print it back in. And so therefore, uh, if the artist or the management or the network wants any change, vocal up, vocal down, I already have the, the, the actual sound that I want baked into the stems and I can just raise it or lower it from there. Um, as you can see on the lead vocal, um, across all the tracks, first I have just uh, heat engaged in Pro Tools, then console one on the first uh, channel, a uh, first insert, sorry. And that's just some filtering, EQ and basic compression and some dynamics like gates and things like that on it, on every channel, just to kind of rein things in a little bit. On her lead vocal, I have uh, a plug-in of uh, Poltec and then Fab Filter Pro Q2 and then Soothe 2 for some DSing. And then it's going to a slap, which is uh, Cooper Time Cube. And then it's going to the legendary and iconic AMS RMX for some ambience. And then an even tied um, harmonizer for the, you know, staple micro pitch shift sound. And then the Cooper Time Cube is going to my hardware TC Reverb 4000 that's in a smaller room. So now the slaps are, are you know, dancing around like it's in the room. Her vocal is also going to the hardware Roland Space Echo. It's going to, well, doing uh, quarter note delays. The uh, Echoplex EP4 doing eighth note delays. The... Um, Lexicon PCM 92 for the classic plate, the reverb, uh, TC Electronics Reverb 4000 for the, the smaller room sound I was speaking of. Then it's also going to um, a TC 1210 chorus spatial expander. It's also getting molted and sent to channel two of the console for um, some parallel compression. So that's coming out to the console on channel one. The parallel compression is coming on channel two and all the plugins are coming on three and four. BGVs are going to uh, five and six. The two track is going to seven and eight. The live drums has the console on it. Um, some Pro Q2 just getting out some of the harshness of some hi-hats and some cymbals, I believe. Then a Shadow Hills compressor just to glue it all together. That and the SPD are coming to um, 9 and 10 on the console. Uh, sound effects is going to 11 and 12. The Foley and Room Tone are going to 13 and 14, which are getting sent to groups uh, 1 and 2. And then the ambience mics are going to 15 and 16 on the console that are also getting sent to group 1 and 2. The basses are going to 17 and 18, guitars 19 and 20, uh, the keys are going to 21 and 22, and the only, only thing I did on the main keys was add some uh, Millennia EQ. And then on the orchestra is getting sent to 23, 24, and on the strings I'm just putting some tape. And for example, I have notes here of once it hits the console, like the lead vocal, things that I'm adding on the inserts. Um, I'm putting on the lead vocal a TubeTech PE1C to a TubeTech uh, CL1B to um, also send it to the, the, the para, the, the parallel compressor um, is going to output two and I'm putting an 11, a hardware 1176 to an LA2A on that. So you'll see notes in the session of things that I have on um, the tracks, like the keys, 
Um, it's going to a 1073 hardware EQs, to a Kush Clarifonic, um, to an API 2500 for some compression. So most things, once the, the, they're hitting the console, almost everything is having an insert of some EQ and some compression once it hits the console. Um, I'll let you hear a little bit of the ambience mics and the audience mics so you can kind of hear how we blended all that. So this is just the ambient mics uh, coming back uh, into what we recorded hitting the console so you can uh, hear that just to kind of get a sense on you know what the song sounds like and what's there and as you can see as well everything is coming back into my direct inputs from the direct outs of the console like I said if I needed to make any changes I can do it from those which is very very helpful So you can hear how the song is and what's going on there. Um, what's, in, what, what's important to, to think about is the way I have it routed so I'm able to work quickly as we always talk about being able to work quickly. I have all of the lead vocals going to group three and four. As I said in episode two, all of my hardware effects, reverbs and delays are also being sent, as you can see here, to groups three and four. So now the lead vocal, the parallel compressed lead vocal, and all the effects on the lead vocal are going to groups three and four, which I'm able to balance and do there. And on that group, I added um, an Avalon compressor, stereo compressor, just to kind of glue it all together there. Um, and then the Foley, uh, Room Tone, and Ambience mics, as you can see, are all getting sent to group one and two. I sent those as well to the Eventide, what I have a, a, a preset that has some early reflections on it, and I'm also sending it to the Bricasti, just to kind of put a, a wash over the whole thing. Those are being sent to group one and two. So all vocals and vocal effects even the, the vocal plugins in the box are all going to three and four, the lead vocals. All the room tone, um, Foley and ambience mics, plus the effects are all going to groups one and two. And then the rest of the tracks are just going straight to the, the mix outs. Um, so what's great, as you can see, is that once we start being able to print this and, and we have a mix that we like. I can now do something that used to take me many passes and do it in a few passes now. So what I'm able to do, once I have a mix that I like, everything, even the groups are getting sent to the, the mix outs. So I'm printing back in all the stems pre-fader. So the, the stems are going direct out every channel one through 24 back into the console. As well, like I said in episode uh, two, I'm printing my two track mix of the full mix into my print rig. So both of those things are now happening in one pass. Now, once I do that, a lot of times the network or the streaming service or the film may want as an option mix minuses, meaning they want the vocal separated, they want the, uh, the, the ambience mic separated, and then they want just the TV track separated, meaning just the track with any BGVs. So you'll have a TV track, lead vocal, and your ambiences. So now what I can do from my patch bay, I can send out of my mix outs, the, the, the left right of my mix out, I can send the full mix, I can take the groups out of that. So now you're just getting the TV track. Now for my patch bay, I'm able to go out of the hardware, the, the, the hard outputs of group one and two into another pair of my uh, audio interface inputs. So now I'm tracking at the exact same time the ambience mics. Then out of the group three and four hard outputs is going into another pair of my print rig inputs. 
So now I have just a lead vocal. So what's getting printed all at the same time after I've just printed my full mix and my stem prints back into the, the Pro Tools session, I'm now printing the TV mix into two pairs of my audio interface. I'm printing all of the ambience mics, Foley and Room Tone with its effects on it, out groups one and two into a pair, and also um, the lead vocal, parallel compression, uh, in the box uh, delays and reverbs, plus all the hardware getting sent to three and four, and that's getting printed in. So now what I'm able to do is send the network with my deliverables, um, all of those assets in one pass. Then what I'm able to do in Pro Tools, the way I have my template set up, is that depending on what the deliverables are, I can send uh, the mix at minus one, a nice loud mix, but I can also print through sends post limiter. I can send them the same mix and all the sub mixes at minus six, at minus 12 and minus 18. So at one time hitting play, I'm getting all of those TV track, uh, ambience, lead vocals, all printed at minus one, minus six, minus 12 and minus 18, all in one pass. So again, you can see how powerful the console is and the routing that you can do in it. And uh, again, when you watch the, uh, the final performance in the link, um, you'll even see more than how I was able to do that and how the final product ended up. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And again, um, these are just the ambience mics and um, check out the full video to see the final performance. Thank you and stay tuned for our next episode.